Okay, so I would like to talk to you about an alternative to using the terminal to issue commands against AWS. And this is using Cloud Shell. So Cloud Shell is this icon right here on the top right corner of your screen. And if you don't see it, just make sure you check out the Cloud Shell availability regions because it's not available everywhere. And so if you go to the AWS Cloud Shell FAQ, you can see that there are uh, some regions that's not available. So let's have a look. Right now with the regions, here we go, question three. Right now, that I'm recording, it's only available in one of these regions. So by the way, I would recommend if you want to follow along to just use one of these regions then so you can use Cloud Shell. But if you don't use Cloud Shell in this hands-on, that is completely fine. If the terminal was working for you, do not worry, you're good to go, okay? So we have Cloud Shell in here. And within Cloud Shell, it could take a minute maybe to launch your environment. You can issue commands. For example, you can issue the AWS command. So as you can see, it is installed. And if I do AWS minus minus version, as you can see, I'm on version 2.1 right now using Cloud Shell. So Cloud Shell is basically a terminal in the cloud of AWS that's free to use, okay? So the cool thing about Cloud Shell is that whenever you are using the CLI, so for example, AWS IAM, list users, this is going to return for you an API call as if the credentials being used were the credentials of the accounts of you using the cloud right now, which is why the API calls are working. And by default, you can specify any kind of region you want to do the API call using the minus minus region argument. But in Cloud Shell, the default region is going to be the region you're currently in logged in right now in Cloud Shell. So this is another thing that's good to know. Okay, other things that you should know about Cloud Shell is that you have a full repository. So for example, right now, as we can see, we have zero files within Cloud Shell. But if you just do echo test into demo.txt, this is going to create a text file that contains the word text, uh, test. And so it turns out that if you happen to restart your Cloud Shell, then this file will stick. So all the files you are creating within your Cloud Shell environment, for example, this demo.txt, are going to stay. And the other cool thing you can do about Cloud Shell is that you can configure it. So you can say what font size you want, smallest, medium, large, and so on, the, te the theme you want, so light or dark, uh, if you want safe based or not. So this is like a bigger Cloud Shell for me right now. And also you have the possibility to download and upload files. So for example, if I want to get the full path to my file, so this demo.txt, I can just copy it right now, action and download file and then do demo.txt, and this will go ahead and download the file for me. And alternatively, you could upload your own files into your Cloud Shell environments. So it's I want to show you these handy options because for me, they are lifesavers, okay? And finally, if you wanted more tabs into this environment, you could have a new tab. You can split into column, for example, and there you go. You have two terminals into Cloud Shell connected at the same time. So really, I want to show you the power of Cloud Shell in this uh, hands-on. Again, you don't need to know all the commands I just did. I just wanted to show you if you're a power user um, that you could do these commands and how they would work with Cloud Shell. So the bottom line for this lecture, again, is number one, Cloud Shell is only available in some regions. So maybe tr try to choose one of the regions where Cloud Shell is available if you want to use it. If you don't want to use Cloud Shell or Cloud Shell is not working for you, this is completely fine as long as you use the terminal the way we configured it from before, this will work just fine and you'll be fine in the course to either use Cloud Shell or your terminal to perform the commands with the CLI against AWS, okay? And also remember that I really like the upload and download feature of Cloud Shell to the upload files and download files from it, okay? So that's it for this lecture. I hope you liked it and I will see you in the next lecture.